welcome back to another video. Today we will cover another topic, flight modes. So viscous launch gliders are a complex glider to set up and the reason is we expect the model to go through several very different flight conditions from high speed launches with minimal drag to slow high lift floating conditions. In this video I'm going to talk about what the flight modes are, the five basic flight modes in a discus launch glider setup, what each flight mode achieves, and at the end of the video I'll demonstrate how the flight modes look like when it's set up on my Banff 2 glider, so remember to stick around to the end of the video. So what are flight modes? Flight modes are preset conditions for the glider to meet different flight objectives. For DLGs, the main difference between flight modes is the amount of drag and lift the wing produces, and this is mostly controlled by how much camber the wing carries. In a discus launch glider, there are five basic flight modes. The launch preset and zoom modes are part of your launch routine. Speed, cruise, and thermal are part of your regular flight modes for flying. Before we continue, if you find our videos useful and like our videos, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize that this video is useful and relevant and that people like it, so in turn, they will make it more visible to others who are interested in flying discus launch gliders or are searching for more information on DLGs. Thank you. Okay, so now that we know the five basic flight modes, what do they do? As I mentioned earlier, the launch phase uses two flight modes, the launch preset and zoom mode. Before I get into more detail, let's rewind a few years. Before radio programming was as powerful as now and gliders were not using such critical airfoils, we weren't using a zoom mode for DLGs. Usually people were just using the launch preset and then using speed mode to double up as the climbing phase. Now things have progressed, it's easier to set up a zoom mode now, so let's do that to get the maximum launch height we can. In this graphic, you'll see how the launch is broken down. The first flight mode we'll talk about is the launch preset. So it's used to pitch up the nose of the glider and it's turned off a split second after the glider leaves your hand. The reason we need a launch preset instead of just you know, launching it at a higher angle or trying to throw more up it's quite important. For one thing, most human bodies can pull laterally with much more force and speed than with an upward motion, so that means you can throw the plane harder. Secondly, throwing the glider at a high angle means the wingtip comes very close to the ground on the lower part of the swing plane, so that means it's very easy to hit the wingtip on the ground, or aka a tip strike. And thirdly, it's very easy to accidentally apply a twisting motion to the wingtip when you're trying to throw it at a high angle. So it's very easy to damage the wingtip, especially with you know, current wingtips where it's very small and thin. Because of these reasons, it's recommended to throw at a lower angle and use the launch preset to help rotate your glider to the optimum climbing angle. I usually have zero camber on my launch preset, so it's just flush and a few millimeters of up elevator. If you're just starting out, you probably don't want a very aggressive rotation. So maybe just use a millimeter or two of up elevator so you get a nice shallow climb before you let go of the launch preset and it starts climbing up. Now as you get more in tune with your glider and with the launch mechanics, you want that to be as aggressive as possible. Remember, the faster the model rotates into the climbing phase, the less energy is lost, so the higher your launch will be. Now, okay, so once you let go of the launch preset, a split second after letting go of the glider and the glider is at its near vertical vector, your radio should go into the second part of the launch sequence, so zoom. Zoom is the glider set up in its minimal drag configuration, so there is no lift involved, it's as close to zero lift as possible, and it's as drag free as possible. The glider climbs in a ballistic manner, so kind of like a rock being thrown instead of a wing producing lift, and it's going to climb all the way up to the apex. Once you hit the apex, you push the plane over into your regular flight modes. The manufacturer will usually have a camera setting for you to follow to set up zoom mode. For an example, on the Banff 2, zoom is two millimeters of reflex, so the flap rounds come up two millimeters. And the elevator is trimmed so that it climbs as straight as possible. Now leave a comment down below, let me know if you're using a zoom mode. Next, the three regular flight modes are usually speed, cruise, and thermal. So with speed mode, the purpose is getting the glider in its best glide ratio setting. Quite simply, this is the setting that allows the glider to go the furthest distance for the same amount of height. So when it's blowing and you're downwind and you're trying to come back to the field, you'll often be using speed mode. On a BAMF 2 where we have molded the wing in the speed setting, you'll simply align the flap rounds flush to the tabs. That's it. Next is cruise mode. 
And as the name suggests, it's an all-round setting for cruising around, somewhere between speed and thermal mode. There's no hard rule of how much camber you should have in your wing. I usually have about two or three millimeters of camber. It's kind of what's comfortable for you. Usually I'm flying in cruise mode unless I'm way down when trying to come home, which it means I'm in speed, or I'm trying to maximize my hang time, which would be in thermal mode. So lastly, thermal mode. This setting is used at the maximum camber for slow and high lift setting, so as floaty as possible. It's often used while in a thermal, so you get the best climb rate, or if conditions are very soft and you're just trying to float as long as possible. On the Banff 2, I'm running eight millimeters of camber in thermal mode, but keep in mind, the more camber you have set up, the more sensitive the plane becomes. So sometimes you might not want to use the full eight millimeters of camber. This really comes down to your own personal preference. So some people have their thermal mode set up maybe seven millimeters, six millimeters. You'll have to try to test that out. Hmm. So. Are these the only flight modes people use in DOGs? No. Sometimes pilots break down their flight modes in more detail. For example, they might have a fast cruise and slow cruise instead of a single cruise mode. Likewise, for thermal at, let's say, 8 millimeters, instead of using that, they have a thermal 1, maybe that's 6 millimeters for general thermal flying, and might have a thermal 2, which in this case, let's say eight millimeters, which is a more specialized setting where the wing has more camber, it gives the absolute maximum amount of hang time. And you usually set that up with lots and lots and lots of careful flight testing in you know, still air, maybe in the early morning or in evening against a stopwatch. But this might be too sensitive to fly in regular conditions. So that's why they might have that on another thermal mode. And the last big one is a landing mode. Now, some people use it, I don't. Personally, my brakes on the flap stick, it's always active regardless of which flying mode I'm in. It's just one less thing for me to do when I'm coming in for a landing, makes it easier, faster. Another thing I do is I put a spring onto my flap stick on the gimbal. So as soon as I let go of the flap stick, it always comes back down to zero. And as you probably noticed, I push up for flaps and most people pull down for flaps. So some people will set up landing mode on a physical switch, just like their other flight modes. And some people have their landing mode on the flap stick and either through a digital switch on Spectrum or a logical switch on FreeSky. Let's say you move your flap stick 5% and then it doesn't really move anything yet, but after the 5%, then it goes into landing mode automatically. And maybe you have some different aileron differential, etc. So that's a really, really good way of setting up flight mode. In fact, I'll probably end up doing something like that in the future, but I've been flying it this way for many years and I just haven't spent time on incorporating that into my setup yet. So let's see what all of this looks like. Now I'm using the Spectrum iX20 and I'm using the Spectrum AR410 receiver in my Banff 2. So on this radio, I moved the push button from here to over here so that I can use that as the launch preset. So basically I just hold down this button and then it's launch preset. I let go, it goes into zoom mode. You can probably see the camber over here. And three seconds later, it exits into whatever flying mode I'm in. In this case, it was speed. So speed, cruise, thermal. I press this, it's launch preset. I let go, it's in zoom. Three seconds later, it goes into whatever flight mode I was in. And I'll also demonstrate. So this is my flap stick. As soon as I let go, it goes back to center. So let's say in a quick turnaround situation, I'm coming in, I'm coming in. All right, I catch the model and I let go of the flap stick. I push the launch preset button. I let go of the plane. I let go of the launch preset and it's climbing. So it's a very simple process that I use for launch preset. And that just makes it easier for me to do quick turnarounds. Now, thank you for watching. I hope this video has helped you get a better understanding of flight modes and their purposes in a DLG. Now that you know what flight modes you need, we'll go through how to set up the program in your radio in an upcoming video. Now, remember to hit the bell icon so you don't miss it. Cheers. Have a good day.